Originally, the policy of the government was that all users should pay for water and that the poor should at very least pay for the operating and maintenance costs of their water supply. But we found with the benefit of uh, four or five years of experience that uh, South Africa actually is it's a very unequal country. There's some very substantial levels of really deep poverty. Uh, and we found that in those circumstances, if people had to choose between paying a dollar a month for water when out of a tap which was clean and safe, when they could go down to a river and collect water which was dirty, unsafe, but free, we found that people were very often uh, reverting to unsafe water supplies uh, simply because they literally had to choose between buying water and buying food. This is what happens when you have really deep poverty and very substantial structural unemployment in a society. We're lucky because we're a middle-income country. And when this kind of situation became more obvious, a decision was taken at political level which said that water, clean, safe water, is far too important uh, for people's well-being to uh, allow the funding of the basic needs to become a barrier. So South Africa introduced a policy of providing a free basic water supply for all people to ensure that uh, affordability did not become a barrier. Now that free allowance is 25 litres per person per day, which works out for a household of eight at 6,000 litres per month. It's not a particularly uh, expensive subsidy. Indeed, to collect the uh, $6 a month that uh, that's worth, the administrative costs of that might even exceed the, uh, uh, the, 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 the funds that are brought in. And through the system of local government finance, uh, a subsidy is provided to local government to provide that free basic water uh, to all, all citizens. And it's currently reaching probably 80% of the population at the moment. So the needs of the urban poor were addressed by introducing a very specific um, targeted subsidy uh, in the belief that poor people uh, would be able to survive with the 6,000 litres per month per household and that better off people who used usually two or three or four times more than that uh, would essentially pay back the free water that they had received through somewhat higher tariffs for larger amounts of water. Uh, and we found that the cross-subsidy system from high levels of use to low levels of use is working reasonably effectively. Um, there's always discussion as to whether uh, targeted subsidies, giving money to poor households, would have been better. Uh, we in fact left it open to local governments to choose whether they would want to simply identify poor families to provide free water to and expect everyone else to pay, whether they would make water from standpipes free but es essentially say that anyone with a house connection had to pay, or whether they would give free basic water to all households and claw the subsidy back through cross-subsidies from higher users. And what we found is that the variety of mechanisms are being used, the result of which is that we have far fewer people going to polluted rivers to take water and ignoring the, the piped water safely available nearby. That's not happening anymore. And we believed that that very much justified this policy of free basic water. Once I uh, hear this uh, talk about poor and rich, I remember the story about the Russian Revolution. So after the October Revolution last century, there was discussion between those who were making this revolution and those who were making the first revolution in uh, 1825. So the first one was aristocratic revolution. And the grandmother is asking uh, her grandson, for what reason is this next revolution? He said, in order that rich people should not exist. And she, say, she said, well, our revolution, our first revolution was that for the poor people, they should not exist, they should become rich. And this is the approach. The approach is once we can provide good quality utility service to the people, they become richer. So our focus is how to improve the quality, and this is the primary focus. 
In this regard, we are supported by the Russian government and by the Russian system because uh, they introduced a specific system of the social support network where all people whose household income uh, does not provide them to pay less than 20% of his household income to pay for the utility service, they are subject to the subsidies from the regional budget and support from the federal budget. So in this regard, this system works and we could concentrate more on the other side, on the supply side of the, of the equation. I think uh, it is important that we should try to promote some ideas, some very specific ideas, how we could support, let's say, poor people. For example, for a long time in our country, there is a system of so-called cross-subsidization. means, let's say, commerce and industry and municipal uh, companies, they pay more than general public. So now we are increasingly phasing out this system, so in order to have equal tariff for, for, for everybody, given that we have a social support network. But on the other hand, in order to decrease the load from the local budget to subsidize, let's say, specific groups of the poor customers, in order to increase maybe subsidies for those who are eligible, we uh, constantly discuss and introduce to the local governments the idea of the so-called social tariffs, means people who are less than 15 or older than 60, they have to pay for their services only the operating cost of the, of the system. And the capital cost should be covered by the commerce, by the industry, by, by the people in the active working age. Well, it's even socially fair. The issue of the poor has always been coming up every time and again. And we've already said that we have no problem, in actual fact, serving the poor. In actual fact, the poor are our best payers. Uh, but of course, uh, th that being said, we have to make sure that we facilitate their getting to our service by introducing um, a special tariff. Uh, our tariff is branded into four bands and the lowest band was actually meant for catering for those people who are actually low income earners so um, the tariff is low enough and with them accessing a connection there was no problem they could pay the second thing we did was the introduction of um, a new connection policy whereby we allowed every customer who was within um, 50 to 100 meters of our service lines would get a free connection and that that actually encouraged a lot of our poor customers to get free access to our services and hence uh, uh, got connected so those two elements in actual fact helped in improving our service delivery uh, to the poor